Let's study the text together, beginning in verse 1. Verse 1, he says here, what's this first word? Finally. In conclusion, he's saying, finally, my brothers and sisters in Christ, here's how I want to summarize all that I've taught you so far in the book of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord. That's the summary, he says. And so then to write the same things. Paul, what are these same things? Well, our best guess, and we don't really know, but our best guess is that these same things are the things he wrote to the other churches. What comes from here sounds a lot like what's in Colossians and Galatians. So to write the same things, because it's the same things to you, to write the same things to you, church in Philippi, look, it's no trouble for me, and it's a safety rail, a safeguard for you, says Paul. He starts a comparison. He says, look out for, he actually repeats this word three times, look out for one, the dogs, two, the evildoers, three, the mutilators. Dogs. This is what the Jewish people would call Gentiles. Why? Because dogs will eat anything. Dogs eat their own poop. I'm sorry to go there, but they do. And then you let them lick you. How gross is that? And for Jewish people who have a very strict food law, think about how unclean dogs are, right? So he says, beware of, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for the mutilators. What does he mean by that? Is, are these three different people? No, they're not. They're actually speaking about the same type of person. This word here, mutilators, connects to this word, circumcision. The word mutilator is a cousin word for this word, circumcision. Circumcision is cutting off flesh for a purpose, for a reason. It's flesh that's not necessarily needed. Mutilating would be to cut flesh that is needed without a purpose. What Paul is talking about here is a group of supposed Christians, people who call themselves Christians, called the Judaizers. They would say, yes, believe in Jesus, but you also must eat appropriately. You also must follow all the laws of the Torah. You also must get circumcised. And so he has this comparison. There's the Judaizers, but then we are the actual circumcision We who worship by the Spirit of God, glory in that word, glory is a word for boasting. So we who boast in the name of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, and who put no confidence, no boasting in the flesh. Section number three, he gives a correction to their theology. Though I myself have reason for confidence, that's that same word boasting, right? Though I could boast in my flesh also, and if anyone else thinks he has reason to boast in the flesh, I have more. This is the beginning of a like a yo mama competition about to happen, right? He's going, oh, you're raising this? Yeah, well, I'm raising this, okay? So watch it. Watch what he says here. All right, you want to talk about circumcision? I was circumcised on the eighth day. Why does he mention that? Well, because the Israelites were circumcised on the eighth day, but the Ishmaelites would get circumcised at the 13th year. So he's saying, I'm not just regular circumcised, I'm proper Israelite circumcised. I'm circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel. Further than that, of the tribe of Benjamin. Further than that, a Hebrew of Hebrews. What's he saying? Two meanings of that phrase, a Hebrew of Hebrews. One's it's like a song of songs. It's the best of the best. Second, it means Both my parents were Hebrews. I did the Ancestry.com study, right? The DNA and me and whatever. We found out Hebrew all the way, okay? Because there were some who would come to the faith. They might have had a Greek mum or a Greek dad, but a Hebrew mum or a Hebrew dad, right? So they were a mix of things. No, no, no. My lineage is quality, says Paul. What about as to the law, I'm a Pharisee. Those guys, they held the law. They were a bummer at every party, okay? And then he says, as to zeal, as to passion, as to fervorance of this law, I was a persecutor of the church. Do you see how this has gone ironic now? 
He's like, oh, you want to talk about mothers? Oh, you want to talk about passion? He says, I persecuted the church. And all of a sudden you have a pause. Oh, oh, he's bringing his CV here and this is quite intense. As to righteousness under the law, so righteousness, but he gives this little kind of dot, dot, dot here, under the law righteousness. It's a different kind of righteousness. It's righteousness under the law. I was blameless or I was faultless, he says. But whatever gain, sir, you got to be careful to add that in. A lot of translations don't. Whatever I gained, plural, from my lineage, from my adherence and study to the law and my zeal, all of those gains I now count as a singular loss for the sake of Christ. Because I get to know Jesus. I get to be in relationship with the Messiah. Do, friends, do you know him? Like I'm not playing church games. Do you know Jesus? Is he all that you want to need? So that everything I used to have, is loss. It's all loss for the sake of knowing Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss. He's repeating what he said here. He's really wanting to bury down into it because of the surpassing worth. Please hear this. Surpassing worth. It, something of infinite and amazing value of knowing Christ, not knowing about Jesus, not having gone to Sunday school, not having your parents' faith, you knowing him, says Paul. That is of infinite worth. I count everything else as loss because of this. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all these things and I count them as, and here he swears, Rubbish. Now, we don't translate it into a swear word in English because we're Baptists. Because it would be inappropriate. It would be irreverent, wouldn't it? And yet, the word Paul chooses is a swear word in Greek. Can you imagine how that would have sounded? Hey, guys, guys, we got a letter from Paul back. Shall we read it? Sunday morning, we're all together. It's church. Let's read what Paul has written to us. And they get to this point and the guy reads it out without even thinking and then everyone goes, <gasps> it's just sworn, just swore. It, it's intentionally shocking. Paul chose this word. It's not by accident. It's not a Freudian slip or a slip of the tongue. He chose this word to shock the people into the full reality of what's going on here. I count all these things as rubbish. And we're going to talk about exactly what that word means in a moment. In order that I might gain Christ, that I might be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own, for that comes from the law. So we've got different types of righteousness here. It's not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Now, I'm going to have to talk about that verse, that little line as well. And you haven't had enough coffee to handle the amount of Greek lecture that would be. So I'm going to have to give you the simplified version, okay? But it has two different meanings and we'll get into it in a moment. But that which comes through, the righteousness that comes through faith in Christ, that is the righteousness that's from God, depends on faith. Now, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Now, this, this phrase here, by any means possible, what Paul's not saying is that I might do everything so that I could earn Jesus. He's saying that in some way, in some method or other, I have attained to the resurrection of the dead. And so here it is. In the first section, he says, rejoice in the Lord. Second, he says, we are the circumcision. Third, he says, what they call as a gain is actually a loss. Final section, he says, self-righteousness. This righteousness from you trying harder, you doing better, you working. It's rubbish, he says. So what does he mean? Why did he choose this swear word? So the word rubbish, we translate to dung, manure, poop. And it is the Greek equivalent to our word sugar, honey, iced tea, if you can make that acronym work in your mind. 
That's, that's really quite irreverent, Paul. Why? For Holy Scripture inspired by God, why would you pick that word? Well, can I tell you something that I didn't know before this week's study? I learned something new. I always like learning something new. There is an obscure secondary meaning for this word, not commonly used this way, but on occasion someone would use this word rubbish to mean the scraps of the table of food that you throw onto the floor for the dog. Isn't that interesting? What is he called the Judaizers? Dogs. So even if he means this obscure secondary meaning for the swear word, it still would hit our ears like it hit them like a swear word. But he's so clever in what he's done with it. It's shocking at first and as you ponder on it, you realise he is calling that which they call amazing, he's calling scraps for the dog. 